Okay, so we are going on week four, and we still haven't seen Isaiah Rogers, even with Slay being hurt. Plus, it looks like the Eagles will be without their top three wide receivers. Thank God the bye week is close, but that's not all. Two interesting roster moves to help the passing game, and can we see Jahan Dodson live up to his first round status when really needed? What is going on, everybody? I go by Philly Mike, and this is the Philly Toll Podcast. Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss the videos. As we all know, the Eagles sit at 2-1, and one, and we are a Saquon Barkley drop away from being 3-0. But without Saquon Barkley, we don't win the two other games that we win, so all is forgiven. We just have to move on. Going into week four, Saquon Barkley is the NFL leading rusher with 351 yards on the ground. Let's not forget, he's tied for first place in the NFL overall in total touchdowns with five. This guy has been a huge part of the success of the early Eagles. Now, sooner or later, we will have to lessen the workload, give him a little bit of break, use other skill positions, because he's on pace to break the most touches he's ever had in his career, and we need him for the long haul. However, week four, he's about to be a workhorse again, because as it stands today, our top three wide receivers will not be suiting up versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Britton Covey, broken shoulder, out for six weeks. Devontae Smith, concussion, even if everything goes well, most likely he misses this game, especially with the bye week next week. And you could say the same thing for A.J. Brown. He was only supposed to miss multiple weeks, but the same guy that told me last year that A.J. Brown won't play when everybody said I was lying hit me up today and said it don't look good for A.J. Brown playing. It looks like they don't want to risk it with the bye week coming up. And I can't blame him. Imagine you play him, something happens where he's out for the rest of the season or four to five more weeks. We got the bye week. Tampa's not going to be easy, but I think with Saquon Barkley, Dallas Goddard, and of course we need the next three wide receivers to step up in Jahan Dodson, Johnny Wilson, and Paris Campbell, who was making plays at training camp and had a couple catches versus the Saints once Smitty went out. The Eagles also make some roster moves, elevating Jack Stahl to the 53-man roster with him at the tight end position being able to block. That frees up Dallas Goddard to run routes and help this passing game. Plus, the second fastest wide receiver in the NFL is back on the practice squad and could also be elevated closer to the end of the week if needed. Yes, John Ross is back. Listen to Kellen Moore speak on the three guys that got to step up to replace the three injured wide receivers. Yeah, excellent job. Again, a really cool example of guys uh, being able to play adjustment football. Those guys, you know, ran around. They probably ran a few plays that they really have never ran necessarily other than watching other guys run them in a number of weeks. And so for them to be able to hop in there and, and play those adjustments and line up in, in the different positions that they probably didn't anticipate lining up in and being able to execute those plays, Towards the end, Jahan, you know, handling some of those uh, mesh plays really, really well and doing a great job with those. Like, that's an awesome example. That was Smitty earlier in the game. You know, now all of a sudden Jahan's in there and he, he's able to execute at a really high level. And so, you know, we feel really co confident, comfortable with those guys, especially, you know, you give them a, a few extra days and they can kind of keep continuing to develop and handle all the different adjustments through a game plan. And so uh, we feel very fortunate to have those guys. From there, they started asking him questions about his game plan and would it have to change with the different personnel? How much can you put on their table and stuff like that? No, you just understand circumstances as far as, uh, you know, who may or may not be available for a game. And so I think what uh, Aaron does an excellent job with that group is, you know, we, we have a certainly a foundation of how we anticipate the game going with the players, but they really have to have a great understanding of the big picture of the concepts and understand that they may have to make an adjustment based off who's available during the game. And so, uh, you know, it's a big picture group. It's a really special group, uh, you know, for, to, for us to have guys like Paris who can hop in here, played a ton of football. Jahan's played a ton of football. Johnny, we're so fired up to have. And so for those guys to hop in there and just play ball, we feel really confident and comfortable with them. I can see Paris Campbell catching a deep ball down the field, sparking the offense that way. 
As for Jahan Dotson, I believe he has to have the most targets and most receptions as it pertains to Eagles wide receivers. But don't sleep on Johnny Wilson. He's been utilized when the wide receiver court was fully healthy. Look for him to be big inside the red zone or on crucial third downs using his big body. Like I said, it won't be easy versus Tampa, but I still think this Eagles team can find a way to win, get to the bye week, get healthy, and then NFL, watch out. So now I got to ask you guys a question. We know Saquon Barkley and Dallas Goddard are going to be featured, but who else eats? Jahan Dotson from the slot, Paris Campbell with his speed on the outside, or Johnny Wilson with his physicality on the outside? Let me know in the comment section. Plus, today's the cutoff for the jersey giveaway. Any jersey of your choice. If you want to get a free entry, all you got to do is hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and go to the comment section and type 2 and 1. And we will add you to the finished tally, which will be happening sometime before this Sunday's football game. As we talked about yesterday, Nick Sirianni let us know that he does take over play calling in certain situations here and there, when the question was asked to Kellen Moore, this is what he had to say. We spent a lot of time during the week talking through every possible scenario. Uh, again, similar like short yards, for example. I mean, you're going to carry a number of plays, and it's just a matter of uh, what, what's the right time to call that one. And usually we're, we're bouncing ideas off each other throughout the game, uh, not just those situations, but first and second down. Uh, you know, I, I think we have a really fun collaborative group on our offensive staff and you know and Nick's uh, certainly a part of that heavily and so it, what it allows us to do is really team up on all these different situations talk through the possible outcomes and uh, and make the best decision possible now before I get to my take on the whole Nick Sirianni Kellen Moore play calling thing plus Vic Fangio lets us know why he played Keely Ringo over Isaiah Rogers when big play Slay got hurt and more on the defense let's hear a quick word from our sponsor Mando the best way to control odor for your pits, packages, and feet, my favorite, is the deodorant, Mount Fuji. Sorry about the green screen, but this deodorant is the longest-lasting deodorant I honestly ever use. Some of these other brands claim 48 hours. They barely work for 6 to 8. Plus, you put some other deodorants on, guess what? It's itchy, it's sticky, it bothers, at least me. I know it bothers some of y'all. This one is so smooth and solid. In the starter pack, you get wipes. Quick for your packages, your feet, or the pits real quick, especially after the gym, right? Plus, they come with a lotion. Go to the description or the pinned comment section at shopmando.com. Click it. Use promo code PhillyMike, all capitals, to get five bucks off. Once again, link in the description and the pinned comment at shopmando.com. Click the link. Use code PhillyMike, all capital not the exclamation point, and get five bucks off your starter pack. To Kellen Moore's response on Nick Sirianni taking play calling here and there, I will say this. He did the same thing with Shane Steichen. I just think he allowed Shane Steichen to be him and only offered a little, and he probably still does that. But at the end of the day, I just don't want to hear that Kellen Moore is calling the plays, Eagles are driving down the field, and then Sirianni sees something, changes it up, and slows down the drive. If things need to be discussed, that's cool. But if Kellen Moore is cooking, Eagles offense is flowing, you got to let it be. And I don't want the question to be asked every single post game by the beat reporters. On that third and two in the third quarter, was that you were Kellen? How about that fourth down and three? Was that you were Kellen? On first and ten with this many minutes left, was that you were Kellen? Because it could get crazy out here. Lastly, on Kellen Moore, before we talk about Vic Fangio, Saquon Barkley had this to say about him. The beauty of having Kellen Moore on the sideline is if you're feeling the game and you're flowing, you can go to the sideline and say, this is what I see, this is what I like, and this is what I don't like, and it can get changed right there. Now, we all know Kellen knows the game, but the players feel the game differently, and he listens and adjusts, which I'm also seeing from Fangio from that Falcons defense to the defense we played against the Saints using Milton Williams on the edge to get bigger bodies out there, dropping Zach Bond from the linebacker position on the edge and playing a 5-1 set. N'Kobe Dean, the lone linebacker out there, more bodies to eat up blocks, let N'Kobe see ball, get ball. He also switched Reed Blankenship and C.J. Garner-Johnson 
from the field side to the boundary side, which was good. And he said he doesn't want to get them more comfortable playing their certain sides, but if adjustments need to be made, they will be made. As for the question why Keely Ringo came in and not Isaiah Rogers when Slay got hurt, listen. It was just Keely was, you know, up and ready to go for the game because he had he if we had played any six DBs, he would have been in there. We just thought the guys on the sideline, he was more into it and ready to go and spur of the moment thing. And if, um, you know, if this had happened earlier in the game and there's still a lot of football to play, probably would have seen Isaiah out there. I don't really understand that. He said that Keeley was ready to be in for six DB packages. Well, why wasn't Isaiah Rogers ready to be in for six DB packages? And if they're both dressed, why is he more ready for a smaller role but Isaiah Rogers ready for a bigger role. If you think he's ready for a bigger role, he should still be ready for a smaller role. That don't make sense to me. Fangio don't bull jive like other DCs, but I am so lost to what happened, right? Devin White thing is here and there. I'm not going to keep harping on it. But at once upon a time, Isaiah Rogers was the starting outside corner. Quinya was the starting inside corner, and Slay was the other outside corner. Now that blew up when Isaiah Rodgers hurt his hand. And Quinion is playing too good to move from the outside. But it's weird that Slay went down and Isaiah Rodgers didn't get in before Keely Ringo when he supposedly beat him out. Again, Quinion is playing too dang good. He is tied for first place in the NFL with forced incompletions, which he has six on the early season. As for Jalen Carter, Vic Fangio expects more games like the Saints. Saints. Yeah, um... He obviously, this past game was his best game by far, and hopefully that will set the trend moving forward. Um, you know, I don't know what actually triggered it other than, you know, we he and we as a D-line unit didn't play good in the previous game, so I'm sure that had something to do with it. With a player like that who is so talented, what's the key to making sure that he's consistent with it? Just keeping him on point on a day in, day out basis, not just game day, but practice also. Because, you know, the way you practice usually is the way you'll play. As for Bryce Huff, he said he's going to continue to play him along with a couple other guys on the edge. But I do think we're going to continue to see his snaps decrease until he starts showing us something. Jake Robotti of the NFL tweeted this last night. Wild, Eagles quarterback Jalen Hurts has more tackles than Bryce Huff through three games. That is crazy. With all that being said, I go by Philly Mike, and this is the Philly Tall Podcast. Make sure you go get your Mando. Click the link in the description and or the pink comment section. I promise the deodorant, the lotion, the wipes, they work wonders. And the starter pack, you're getting 20 to 40% off by using my link, and it's a cheap deal already. The deodorant, no stick, long-lasting. Go get yours. Also, do what you got to do to enter the jersey giveaway comment i love hearing from y'all y'all inspire some videos because y'all know y'all football muscle up subscribe to the channel all that good stuff we out